Hey guys, welcome back to the bench. It's been a while. I'm here on the Proxon 250. Um, and you will see here that I have installed a quick change uh, tool post. So put the tools on there and then you know get them all lined up in center. That's opposed to the original way that it is. So I'll take this off and I'll go over because I had to modify this. But here is the original setup. And it's very hard to get the tools on center with this um, with this bar. Sometimes I can't shim the tool high enough, and sometimes I can't shim the tool low enough or drop the tool low enough. So here's what I did. I got one of these cheap tool holder combo things. So here it is right here. It's a mini quick change post and holder kit. Now this comes with a 10 millimeter screw here and a 8 millimeter screw and this takes 8 millimeter but this screw is too long. So if I show you here with the setup the screw is far too long and there's a lot of lateral movement on this screw. So what I did was I got a shorter screw and unfortunately the screw um, screwing into the top was too short so it only grabbed on a couple of threads there. So I bored the inside of this with this tool holder and some shims underneath the tool holder so I could get on center and still issues with that because that tool is twisted. But I inset this screw good bit so we get full turns on it and then we can easily set it up and we're good to go so that's what I've been working on um, one of the biggest issues I had was that this boring bar here has got a twist in it and it was cutting on the underside of the tool so I just ran the lathe backwards after I realized it was cutting on the um, underside of the tool if I had the tool post holder installed, I could have modified it much easier. But again, I needed the tool post holder to make the thing for the tool post holder. So that's that. I also got me some brass here. So got some different lengths of brass. Uh, found a material shop nearby. Let's see if this one fits. No, that one doesn't fit. So let's put in a piece of brass here. Take a gander at what this looks like now. Make sure you put glasses on Donovan. Oh, the book solder. I can't even drop it on the floor. Yeah. Now I haven't used the tool holder yet, so we're going to try it out, safety glasses, dirty safety glasses, let's make sure everything is good to go, you safety it up, right. we are spinning away. okay, so it spins just fine, let's get a turning tool in here, basing tool anyways. Should have set this. This should be set to the right height. Let's check it out here. Looks about right. Let's back out a little bit.
think this bit has got a chip in it. This bit has got a chip, this tool has a chip in it. So let's swap it out for a different one. This one should work. Let's. So I was using this to turn a hardened bolt. I can grind a new edge on it. I'll talk about that at a different point in time. to go a bit lower. There we go. I mean, it's just a smidge low now, but we can dial that in. Problem. Let's take some off the side here. Set my zero. Put two millimeters. I could gear the lathe up a little bit. But there we go. It is working. So, nice turn down. Looks good. So, 
There we go. Um, one of these quick change tool post holders. Not designed for the Proxon lathe, but adapted to fit the Proxon lathe. So, there we go guys. Um, I am going to switch from brass to aluminum here um, in the future. Um, I will still be doing some things with brass, but if I can get away with it in aluminum, I will do it in aluminum. So, that's going to do it for this one on this part, and I got something at the bench to show you, and then we're going to call this one an end. Thank you so much. Okay, end of this video here. Um, these are the shims I used to bar out that whole 80 thou. So I went to the Harbor Freights and they had some more stuff on sale. So I got a pair of 4 inch digital calipers. They are extremely, extremely rough. They need to be cleaned really bad. So I should just take them back, but I want to clean them up and see how they go. So that is little 4 inch calipers. Then uh, <laughs> I can't believe they sell these their telescopic gauges. I don't know how accurate these are going to be, but the set I had at work was Serret, and it was stupid expensive for this. It's pretty... Yeah, they're spring and everything. That's pretty cool. So set of these different hole gauges it's just I can't believe they sell that stuff there and then I got this um, bundle there because I could always use dividers I haven't opened this yet so ruler decimal equivalents on the back 30 seconds 64th on the front and we have Oh, this caliper is very rough too. This might could use a polish. But just a pair of cheap calipers, you can really get messed up. You know, they don't have sharp tips tips on them, so you can't use them for like scoring and stuff, but you know. Then we have these kind of calipers. Measure the thickness of a groove, whatnot. We have internal, internal grooves, internal diameters. Then we have just a pair of dividers um, in, a, in, a, in a depth gauge. So everything is very oiled. And yes, I know in the last clip I had gloves on. I was careful. These gloves prevent my hands from shaking, and the shaking hands on a lathe is far more dangerous than fingerless gloves. So, but yeah, so this is what I got. Um, and then I got some material for upcoming projects. Um, this is all from um, Alrose Metal uh, Distribution Place. So uh, pretty good prices. You get brass aluminum, they cut it for you. You can buy remnants, things like that. So they got them everywhere. But that's going to do it here, guys. Uh, thank you all very much, and have a fantastic day.